Oh, well, hello there again, friends and family. So glad to see that you could stop by again today. And as you can see, we're in our little S10, well, one of two. And this one happens to be black. And it's a rather pleasant day today. Uh, mid, mid 80s. Hey, it's just like being down in the Caribbean, right? But anyway, we wanna go and pick up a couple of things. And while we're at it, we're gonna check on a couple of things. Some of those things that over the last week or so, people seem to be losing their minds over. And I just want to see for myself at this moment in time, just how things are here in my little small town, in my little piece of paradise in the deep south of Alabama. So hey, you want to come along? Jump on in the truck. Plenty of room in the back. You can sit in the bed, throw up the tie new cover, you know, make some benches and whatever. There's plenty of room for several thousand, as all of you know. So hey, buckle up, enjoy the ride. Let's check on a few things. Well, as you can see, the first place we're gonna start this journey today of discovery, and then pick up a few personal items, is of course Walmart. Y'all know how much I really despise having to go here, but it's the only option these days. And whose fault is that? Well, in my opinion, ours. But hey, Let's run on in, grab a couple of things, and check out one thing that we're all wanting to know, right? And here we are at my local Wally World, and we're at the rice section of their grocery department. And as you can see, it's not very big at all. It may be, oh, about eight feet wide at best, six to eight. Yeah, and it includes all the rice, from raw rice, you know the whites, the browns, the different types, the basmati, the jasmine, the long grain, the medium grain, and the extra long, as well as those parboiled rices. You know, the ones that are already pre-cooked. And all you gotta do is sort of soak them and heat them up, you know, like Uncle Ben's. And minute rice, yeah. But this is what I wanted to check on. Not that there was rice, but I wanted to check the prices and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So as you can see, Right here, there are some holes in our little rice section in our Wally World. You can see here, a pound of brown rice. You know, the best kind, because it's got all of its vitamins and nutrients in it, is 83 cents a pound. Well, right below it, you've got the Great Value brand white, long grain enriched. You know, it's a milled rice. That's why it's enriched, uh, because they have to put back what they took away when they stripped the bran from the rice during the milling process. Yeah. But you can also see there's no two pounds or five pounds of the Great Value brand of long grain enriched rice. There is about half of what they had of the two pound bags of brown rice. And just to the right you can see the Mahatma, you know, that fancy yellow. 272 for one pound of yellow rice. Yeah. The price of being fancy has gone way up. But anyway. There is rice here, albeit there are some holes. Let's take a further look at it and see what else we can see while we're here. As you can see right here, here's the jasmine rice from Mahatma. And jasmine is a particular type of rice. And you can also see in the shelf below it is some more jasmine and some basmati. Yeah, there are different varieties of rice and it's very important to understand your different varieties. Not only use them for what they're supposed to be used for in cooking, based on their different characteristics, but also to know what's growing and what's not here in the U.S. and throughout other parts of the world. But here, two pounds of your Mahatma Jasmine, 352. Five pounds, 748. Yeah. Now remember, there was no great value, long grain, white, and rich rice. No, there wasn't in the two pound or in the five pound. They just had one pound and 20 pounds. So I've seen that a lot, especially in Walmart, where the great value brand will be totally missing and out of stock for quite some time. However, the more expensive name brands will still be on the shelf. Yeah, I wonder why. It's probably because there's more margin in the name brands than in the store brand, wouldn't you think? Now we drop down a shelf and you can see the Golden Star brand. Yeah, another name brand. And here again, it's a jasmine rice. 
And I forgot to say, not only is it aromatic, or as some would call it, fragrant, it's a Thai type rice. In fact, most of the jasmine rice that we consume here used to be, and may still be, was imported from Thailand. Yeah, that's a fact. But you'll notice right beside the Golden Star that there's some more Mahatma, and it's a Basmati rice, which is also a fragrant rice. I'm not sure what it smells like. I know the jasmine smells like buttery popcorn, or that's as close as I can put t to you. But the five pound bag of Mahatma, Basmati, I think that's 464. Now you do notice there's a 20 pound bag of jasmine rice below the five pounders, as well as if you look to the left, it looks like this real cool bag. You know, it's got some Japanese writing on it, Botan, but what you can't see, or maybe you can if your eyes are better than me, you can see U.S. number one extra fancy rice. And actually, that rice and that nice looking bag with the Japanese lettering on it, which might make you believe it was imported from Japan, it's not. That's actually cow rose rice, and that is grown in California. And that, my friends and family, is another significant factor to all the fury and panic about rice here in the U.S. and around the world. And we'll be talking about that a little later in the video. Now, here we are at the bottom shelf where they keep the big bags of rice. And that's not why we're here. And you can see on the left is some jasmine rice, long grain, from Imperial Dragon. The one I'm most interested in right here is the cow rose rice, the Botan brand. You can see the nice rose on it. And there's some oriental writing, which may confuse you, and you might think this is imported from China, Japan, or some other Asian country. Well, you'd be wrong. On the bag, you can see it says U.S. number one fancy. Yep. And it's grown in California. And that's a subject that's been tossed around social media here of late between some of the peoples that you may or may not follow you know, from the preparedness community. And what they've been saying sounds pretty dire. But you may not know what cow rose rice is, and you may not even use it in your home. So it may not be an issue, other than if we make it one, and everybody panics, here again, it could drive the price of rice up further in the U.S. So what is cow rose rice? Do you know? Well, it's a medium grain, sticky rice. Yep. Actually, it's the number one medium grain sushi rice alternative to Japanese sushi rice in the U.S. and is the most commonly used in restaurants and in homes to make sushi. I bet you didn't know that because I didn't either until I started digging deep into all things rice. But before we do that, before we do that deep dive, dig deeper into all things rice, let's take another little short ride and see what the situation is at, of course, our locally owned and locally operated superfoods, okay? So hey, let's all run back out, jump in the truck, buckle up, and head on over to superfoods, okay? So yes, you mind wonder. No food investigation or therefore journey can be complete without a trip to Superfoods. And here we are. Let's pull on in and see what's going on. And here we are. This is what we came to see. The rights here at Superfood are locally owned and locally operated. Family food store. And here they have the Mahatma, or Mahatma brown rice, pound for $1.33. They got the China doll gold parboard yeah that's partially cooked for a dollar 17. long grain rice zatarain dollar 25 pound we got the two pound mahatma extra long enriched rice 232 water made medium grain enriched rice which is important to know these are extra long this is a medium grain there's a reason for it. But that's a two pound bag. 
for two eighty nine. The Mahatma, one pound, extra long and rich rice, one nineteen. And then you get down here to the food club. Five pounds of long grain white for two seventy seven. China doll, right here, two pounds of runny one eighty seven. Or you can get the five pounds of Mahatma, extra long and rich rice for five twenty five. Or three pounds of China doll, long grain, three twenty nine. Or right here, Ben's original, long grain white, eight dollars and six cents for five pounds. So there's plenty of rice still here at our superfoods. And that's what we were checking on. And only got two choices, superfoods or Walmart. But hey, let's head on into the back to the house, and run into the command center, and I'll talk to you why it was so important to check on this today. So why today was I out and about and concerned about rice? That would be a relevant question, wouldn't it? Well, it's because I've been seeing things pop up here on YouTube, uh, among other places, concerning the state of rice. Yeah, or the lack thereof. And it all started out back in the earlier part of the year, you know, shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine on February the 24th. Then later into March, Russia decided, you know, they've been having sanctions of all types and kinds leveled against them. You know, so Russia decided that it might be wise to ban grain export, one of which is rice, as we're looking at here. And here it says, the RF Ministry, that's Russian Federation, Ministry of Agriculture suggests banning exports of rice on a period from July the 1st till December the 21st, 2022. The temporary embargo on the export of rice and rice flour will not apply to shipments designated for Euro-Asian unit members, to humanitarian aid, and to the export under international intergovernmental agreements. It also does not cover international transit shipments via the territory of Russia originating and designated outside of Russia. Rice also can be delivered to Russian organizations. I can't even try to pronounce the rest of these. <laughs> but you can see, they propose to ban rice. Export, which you might say, and others have. Woo, this would create a total uh, crisis in the global grain markets. But, is that actually a reality? And is Russia a huge player when it comes to rice? Let's take a closer look at that, okay? So if we run on over here real quick to look Wikipedia, and you know, that's free encyclopedia that many of us use. I'm not saying it's the best reference in the world, but it is the quickest. We have here a list of countries by rice production. And just in case you didn't know, the People's Republic of China is number one in production. Also in importing, not so much in exporting. The United States, where I live currently, is number 11. So let's head on down and see if we can find Russia. Yep, Russia is 38th. And what does Russia do? Well, Russia here... Their production is 1.14 million metric tons of rice. Yeah, another 38th in the world. Not such a big player when it comes to all things rice. Nothing like China or India, the top two. Yeah, or even if you look at the top ten, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, Philippines, Brazil, and Cambodia. And then here we come in. At 11th, and Japan is 12th. Yeah, it'd be significantly more important if the top two had said they were going to ban rice. But my point being, did Russia actually ban rice? Well, let's take another look at what exactly they said. Okay? So if we come right back here to this little small excerpt in this article, and you read back through it again, you'll find, you know, other than Euro-Asia countries, yeah, they banned the export of rice. 
to December the 31st. What's that mean? Well, as you might think, Russia a little upset over the sanctions applied to them by the Western nations. So what have they done? They have banned export of their grain, not only rice here, but wheat and other grains, to those countries that have leveled sanctions against them. And yeah, did that have an impact on uh, the global uh, grain market? Well, sure, somewhat. Should it have had? Not much. But it all gets back to one word, perception. And that perception is based on how things are presented. But let's look at another article about another country that has also decided to ban gr certain grains, one of which is rice. Let's take a look at it now and see how this all starts to build upon themselves across our globe. So here we are at Bloomberg. And back as of um, earlier in this month, this particular article was written on September the 8th, and I will also provide these links to these articles that we're using so you can read them fully and review them in the description below the video, like I always do. But what happened was, all of a sudden, boom, India decides to ban rice. Or, let me say this, many people here on YouTube said it just that way. India bans all rice exports or bans rice export exports well that's only partially true and that's when I started looking into things okay Russia decided to ban their grains you know rice being one of them now India is banning rice what's going on here you know I enjoy rice and indeed about 44 percent of the total world's population depends on rice as a daily staple in their diets. So, India decided that they would ban rice. But not all rices, like some may have portrayed here on YouTube. They banned, as it says right here in the Bloomberg article, top rice exporter India curbs shipments and threat to inflation. Government bans broken rice. Understand broken rice exports and taxes other varieties. The move will send shockwaves through the global ag agricultural markets. Yeah, okay. Here again, we got to drum up the tension and grease the wheels of panic. And that's just what these articles are meant to do. They're meant to grab your attention. And what do we remember? We remember the things that are in the big bold words. Not so much the details. But the important detail here that many may have left out here on YouTube was it was just a ban on broken rice. And you may not know what broken rice is. As you saw, I didn't see any broken rice for sale at our local Walmart, nor superfoods. And I would dare say there's probably not any broken rice for sale at any of the grocery stores and outlets within all the state of Alabama, as well as many, many more. Because what is broken rice? Well, it's broken rice. And it's primarily used, 90% thereof, for animal feed. Yep. You got it. And you may see in your favorite dog food sometimes, contains rice. As well as some dry cat foods. Contains rice. Supposed to be yummy and good for them. I'm not sure about all that. But that's what it's used for. It's used for animal feed. Now, a smaller portion, very small, and this is here of more recent times, poorer countries in Africa have also been purchasing it as a staple, cheap, inexpensive food for their people. These are the poorer nations. So yeah, that is what India banned in total. Why? They did it so they could keep it for their own use, feeding their own livestock, and possibly feeding their own poor. Now, let's look at this article. India, the world's biggest rice shipper, and they are. They're the biggest exporter of rice. China's the biggest importer and producer, remember that, but not the biggest exporter. India actually is. 
restricted exports of key varieties that mainly go toward feeding Asia, Africa, threatening to rattle global crop markets and exasperate food inflation and hunger. The government has imposed a 20% duty on shipments of white and brown rice and banned broken rice sales abroad. The curbs apply to roughly 60% of India's overall rice exports according to the Bloomberg calculations. So yes, they banned in total broken rice sales abroad. But then they put a 20% duty, or we would call it, say tariff, it's nothing more than a tax, on the shipments of white and brown rice. The moves by India, which accounts for 40% of the global rice trade, will put further pressure on countries that are struggling with worsening hunger, soaring food inflation. Rice is a staple food for about half of the world's population, with Asia producing and consuming about 90% of the global supply. Understand, Asia producing and consuming 90% of the global supply. Yeah, now the poor countries they're talking about are primarily countries on the continent of Africa. Yeah, and there are some in Euro-Asia that are just as poor. But these are the countries that will suffer because not only the broken rice ban, but the 20% tariff that was put on the white and brown rices. And it says here, rice is now the third major agricultural commodity in India to face restrictions on overseas sales this year. The South Asian nation has already curbed wheat and sugar exports, adding to a spat of food protectionism that's exasperated chaos in the global food markets brought on by the war in Ukraine. And let me tell you something. Everybody's blaming everything on the war of Ukraine. And if you were to look up how Ukraine plays in the global rice market, well, hey, let me just show you. And then you can formulate your own thoughts of how ridiculous Ukraine and blaming the Ukrainian-Russia war for chaos in the grain markets actually is. Hold on. So we're back at Wikipedia. You know that list. You know, it shows all the countries by rice production. So let's head her on down. And let's keep on going on down. And we're going to keep on going on down. Nope, there we are. There's Ukraine right there highlighted. They're the 83rd producing country of rice in the world. Yep, they produce, are you waiting for it? 60,680 metric tons of rice. Yeah, think about that. When you look at the top 10 up here, 211 million to 11 million. I'm not thinking Ukraine's a big power player when it comes to the global rice trade. What's your thoughts on that? Let me know. You see, you might have heard California's been having a drought. Apparently they've been having it for 20 plus years, some may say. Others in agriculture will say through the last three to four. Who's to say? I don't want to get all into that. Pretty much, it gets really political. And I'm not such a political guy anymore. But here we got California's unique rice harvest opportunity. Yeah. See, it's nearly rice harvest for California. Matured rice stocks will cue the draining of the paddies and the entrance of state-of-the-art combines to collect ripe grain. But this harvest will be different. In the Sacramento Valley, where 95% of California's rice is grown, Growers expect only 250,000 acres of the crop this year, instead of the typical 500,000 acres. The last time rice growers produced this amount was in 1956. Although this shortage will be felt worldwide, it will also mean global demand for innovation and an opportunity for determined businesses to develop new practices. We get down here to the effects of the 2022 
rice crop in California. California is in its third consecutive drought year. See where they say third? I read another article about fruits that said fourth year. If you watch mainstream media and the shock jocks here on YouTube, they'll tell you, you know, it's been going on for 20 plus years. Well, who, who are you to believe? I sort of would like to believe the people that are boots on the ground or hands in the dirt, you know, the farmers. So, like it says, California is in its third consecutive drought year causing some irrigation districts to not plant rice. And that's the important part. You know, they didn't plant 500,000 acres to begin with. They didn't do it. So this ain't one of those deals that people come on YouTube or mainstream media and tell you, you know, the farmers are destroying their crops. Yep. The government's paying them to do it. No, it's not even that issue either. It's just the fact there wasn't water available to plant. They didn't spend the money or the time. They just didn't do it. This spring, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation announced that no water will be delivered to the agricultural water contractors north and south of the Sacramento Delta. This agency will only supply water to meet health and safety needs. And see, that let those farmers who produce rice know what they had to do. Because without the water, they couldn't sustain their crop. Rice is kind of water intensive there. You know, we've probably all seen the flooded paddies, if not in person, on National Ge Geographic, on our TV. The drought, along with labor shortages, rising energy costs, has led to historically high rice prices impacting consumers across the globe. California may lose market share in many of its key export and domestic markets. It is not clear how rice mills will approach their two main export markets. Japan and South Korea. And that's something else to note here. 50% of California's rice crop, 50% is exported out of the country. There are two leading customers, Japan and South Korea. These market takes hundreds of thousands of tons of California rice each year under World Trade Organization's obligations. Account, and they say here account for roughly a third of the California crop consumption in a normal year. Now, I read some USDA statistics that said half, so, you know, who you going to believe? Now, this is another article that pertains to the California rice harvest. And it goes into a little bit more detail. And maybe it explains the situation a little bit better than the article that I previously went over, which was a little bit vague at best. But like it says here, this is California rice industry takes a hit as the drought drags on. Nearly half of California's rice fields are empty due to the drought, according to Aaron Smith, professor of agricultural economics at UC Davis, that's University of California, Davis. Sacramento, California, and they go in here as the calendar turns to September, over 37 million Californians find themselves living under drought conditions for a third straight year. And we're not going to go into all the drought. I think everybody knows about it. But down here, they go into a little bit more detail about the situation and the crop. In a normal non-drought year, farmers across the valley would be preparing for the harvest of one of California's most prominent crops, rice. However, this is not a normal year. A lack of water has greatly harmed California's agricultural industry, specifically rice farmers. Rice production is a heavy water consumer, being the fourth largest water consuming crop in California, according to the Department of Water Resources. Aaron Smith, professor of agricultural economics at UC Davis, said the state was only able to plant 55% of the amount of fields as it planned due to a lack of water. However, eastern counties were less impacted than western ones. While Butte County only lost 17% due to its groundwater resources, Calusa County lost 84% of its rice acreage, and Glenn County lost 75%, Smith said. Much of this land is idle rather than fallowed, according to Smith. He said fallowed land functions as part of the plan, as opposed to idle land, which is considered prevented planting or out of the farmer's control. 
farmers can get crop insurance from the government in the case of a failure of a crop. So what happened in this case of rice this year, farmers said we want to plant a whole lot of rice. And then they looked around and said, we don't have any water. We can't plant that rice. However, these farmers are still eligible to receive insurance payouts due to the prevented planting, according to Smith. Now, you see, they didn't plant 500,000 acres and then 250,000 just didn't make a crop or had to be destroyed, as some people might have related to in some of their, you know, less informative videos. Yeah, it gets back to that shock jock stuff. And all that, the things that get you clicking and get you salivating and waiting for the next apocalypse beyond the hill. Anyway, they never planted it, so they couldn't harvest it. And right here it also says California is the second largest rice producing state behind Arkansas, producing about 900 million in production value per year, according to UC Davis, U.S. crop data. The rice would normally bring in on the order of 900 million total revenue into the north part of the valley. So by cutting that in half, that's a lot of revenue that's lost to that region, Smith said. So it's going to be a great economic impact. But something, and you might still be wondering, well, why was I so concerned about the different types of rice? Not only at Walmart, but at my locally owned and operated superfoods that I love so much. Well, that's because California grows specific rice. Many of us here in America may not actually use it in our daily lives, in our homes, and in our cooking. Some may, some might not. You see, the rice that they grow in California is mostly a short grain rice that's used in sushi and a lot of sort of similar dishes like that. There's going to be less than a normal amount of rice produced in California. But we can import that from other countries, Smith said. And that's going to primarily be countries like Thailand. Rice agu acreage will likely rebound once the drought ends, but this year's massive reduction feels like a harbinger of tough times ahead for California rice. We can expect going forward as the climate continues to warm, less water availability coming out of those big lakes like Shasta that gives the state water, said Smith. We're not getting as much. It's coming down in the snowpack and filling out the lakes. So going forward, it's going to mean changes in the state. And of course, changes in what California plants and harvests in the coming years. But that's why things are so important. What type of rice did we indeed have here locally for our purchase? You saw some medium grain rice. But you saw primarily long grain, extra long grain, and you also saw some medium grain rice. That was the Botan, the Calrose rice, which is also grown in California. You see, 90% of the rice grown in California is either medium grain or short grain, both of which are considered sushi rices. Where on the other hand, most of the rice consumed in the U.S. by most of us, and what's probably sitting in your pantry right now, is white, long grain, enriched rice. Well, you may be a connoisseur and have some brown. Yeah. Or even some wild. Or, if you're of Asian descent, or Asian yourself, you may also have some sushi rice in your pantry as well. But normally, the regular old day-to-day -day Americans, we're eating the long grain white or the brown in our everyday lives. And that's why those little packs that are left out by many that wish to shock you, grab your attention, and get you a clicking, and worse, get you to buying, when maybe it will have no impact at all on your daily lives in your future to come. Now, if you're a great fan of sushi and you're making it once, twice, or several times a week, well then, hey, 
you might want to go out and grab you some of that Botan variety, cow rose rice, and stack it up beside the sofa. Or maybe stack it up around the dining room table and use it for chairs, whichever you would prefer. But all joking aside, I wanted to do this video to shed a little light and a little facts and truth on the panic of the rice in America today. So will rice be scarce in the U.S. and other Western countries, you know, the more developed, wealthier ones? I would dare say not. Yep, because there's another caveat here. In years past, when California has not planted because of lack of water and drought, Arkansas has stepped up the game. And they planted more medium grain. Yeah. You know, Arkansas is the number one producer in the U.S. And when the chips are down, they get her going on. And that's sort of kind of what we're waiting to see this year as the rice harvest comes in across the U.S. So, hey, like I'm saying here, what's the big impact of all these words and all this panic and fear? Well, it comes to that one word again, perception. Yes, it does. And you see, it's just like if you perceive a threat, you take action. If you perceive a shortage, you take action. I mean, not only you, by running out your store and getting all that you can afford and all that you might have. So rather than running out and spending all your hard-earned money, stacking up rice all throughout the house, first of all, are you a great rice eater? Now, I know it's one of the beginning two staples for every preparedness plant. You know, we all depend. It should SHTF or the apocalypse happen on our rice and beans, or beans and rice, as we say. The B&E of survival. Yep. Well, the B&R. I don't know why I was thinking B&E. Maybe because it's a brand of beans. Who's to say? And what will be next this year? I'm thinking it'll probably be the corn and the beans. We'll just have to wait and see. But yes, my prediction here is the only thing that happens is because we perceive a shortage, prices will be impacted and they will rise higher. And with that said, let's take a look at what the price of rice has been historically. Are we at record heights at the moment? Or have there been worse times than now? Let's see. So here we are. Markets Insider. And you can see right there. Rice is a commodity. Traded in the commodity markets. Oh yes, like the Chicago Mercantile. Yeah. And here again. That one simple fact. That it was made a tradable economy. Drives the price up it as well. Not the people who want the rice. Or will even buy it or keep it. But for those who do nothing more than trade it back and forth to make a profit just on the sale. And that's a fact. But let's see what the price of rice is today. So as you can see, rice today, or uh, this was as of closed 9-16-2022, was 17.82 per hundred weight. And you can see right here, if you look at this chart below from October of 2021, up to current time, it's just steady meteoric climb of the price of rice. That really looks bad, don't it? But like I've shown you many times before, is it as bad, is it as bad now as it has been bad before? So let's look at the three year. Uh oh. Yep, you can look back here. Rice was actually a whole lot more expensive. Back at this time period right here. So what is that? Let's see if we can hone in on it. That was 6 June the 1st, 2020. And rice was up to $20.57 per hundred weight. Yeah, that's 100 pounds, by the way. So you can see, rice has been significantly higher just here in the recent past. Maybe we forgot. But let's see if it was ever any higher than that. 
we'll just max it out. And you're going to see another peak. And you go all the way back in time to a time many of us can remember but have often forgot. Remember 2008? You will find that most commodities, most everything, for whatever reason, was the highest it's ever been in 2008 at some point in time. And such is the case with rice. Rice on April 2008 closed at $24.46 per hundred weight. Imagine that. So were we all starving? Did the world, was the world thrust into famine and global starvation? No. It didn't happen in 08, nor did it happen in 2020. Now granted, I know some will say there is famine somewhere in the world, even today. And they're absolutely correct. Somewhere in the world today, there is famine and starvation going on. That's a sad fact of life here upon our planet, where those of less are often put away, out of mind and out of sight, as they say, where those of the richer nations, the Western developed as we are called, yeah, does famine and starvation reign upon our lands? at any given time in our modern memory? The answer to that would be absolutely no. And I'm thinking even with the fact that Russia banned rice to the Western nations that applied sanctions against them, and then India banned the broken rice and put the tariff on white and brown, and now the fact that California didn't even plant but half of its crop Will there still be rice to go around? Well, there will be. If we buy like we normally would. But that's up to you and your perception of the events. And I'll leave it at that. I figured that I would share this all with you. My deep dive. The things that I do to set my own mind at ease. And know the choices I must make to assure my future and that of my children and my grandchildren. I hope you will find it useful. And maybe if you do, you will give it a like, a thumbs up, and even a share. But y'all, it's getting late. The lights are dimming and getting low. And it's time to check on the kitty crew and hand out some treats and call it a night. With that I say, good night to all. And until I, you know the kitty crew, Cleo, Spooky, Speedy, Mr. Gray, Magoo, sometimes Heathcliff, too, and of course little Gracie and Lily Bit. See you on that video. May all of you take care. Stay safe. Prepare as you must and you will. And may God bless you all as you bless others in your life. Goodbye and good night for now.